Hey guys, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get a Boolean value from your user input. This was a question asked in one of my courses, the Complete Python course. And I've essentially simplified the question a little bit here in this code that you see in front of your screen. So in this code, we have a books list defined at the top of the file. And then we've got a function called prompt book. When you run this function, you ask the user for the book title, you ask the user for the book author, and you put those two strings because the input function always returns strings into name and author variables. And then in the question, we have also this code here. And what this code does is it takes the input here, asks the user, have you read the book? Yes or no. By the way, this yes uh, slash no syntax that you see here inside the string is frequently used when you ask users uh, to enter a value. The uppercase value is the default. So essentially, if they don't enter anything, it will say no as the default, uh, or yes, uh, if they type it out. Uh, so what this code does in here is it asks the user for a yes or no answer. And then whatever they type in passes through to the bool function here. Uh, so what bool does is it takes a string or anything else and it turns it into a boolean. Uh, so, okay, that, that might work. But then what happens here in the next if statement is uh, my student was saying if the red variable here is not an instance of bool, then he's going to say, sorry, you did not enter true or false. And um, so the bool function always returns an instance of bool. Uh, so this will never run, essentially, because no matter what you give the bool function, it's always going to give you a bool back. So this line here will always be false. There is no possibility for the red variable to not be an instance of bool. This code says if the red variable is an instance of bool, then we're going to create a new book. This is just a dictionary holding the information about the book, the name, the author, and whether it has been read or not. So this should be a true or false value. And then it's going to append it onto our list up here. Now, this function here is part of a larger program in the course and where we add books to a variable and we save them into a proper database and so on. Uh, but for the context of this question, this is enough to understand where the issue lies. Then at the end of the program, we call the function to actually make sure that it runs. And then we print out the books uh, list. So you can see down here that I've actually run it already. I'm going to run it again just for you to see what happens when you run this. So the first thing we do is we ask for the book title. This is the input function that we have up here. And we're going to say something like you know, the book name is clean code. The author is going to be <clears throat> Uncle Bob. And then whether we've read the book or not, we're going to say yes. If you haven't, you should probably read this book. I'll have a link down in the description below. Okay, so it seems to work, right? We get back our list of books. And in it, we have our dictionary that we've appended in here. The name is clean code, the author is Uncle Bob, and the red status is true. Seems to work. Let's run it again. Now we're going to say clean code, Uncle Bob, but we're going to say no. And now notice how the expectation here is that the red status would be false, but it's actually true. It's true because when you take no and you pass it through the bool function, that gives you true. Let's run the interactive interpreter here, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if we do bool of yes, which is what the user typed initially, we get back true, which is excellent. If you do bool of no, you also get back true. Of course, if you do bool of ASDF, you get back true. Bool of true, you get back true. Bool of false, you get back true. Everything gives you true if you pass it in a string, unless you pass in an empty string. The empty string is the only string that evaluates to false when you pass it through bool. All the other strings evaluate to true. So essentially, when you turn a string into a bool, what you're checking is, is the string empty or not? If it's empty, it will give you false. If it's not empty, it'll give you true. 
So I'm just going to terminate that interactive session there and we're going to run our app again. And now we can verify that what I did is correct. So we say clean code, Uncle Bob. And if we don't type anything, we just press enter, we get false back. That's not because we've somehow passed in the no default. It's because we didn't enter anything. So this here is effectively an empty string. When you do bool of empty string, red becomes false. It's still an instance of bool, but it is false. So this is not what the student wanted. What the student wanted, of course, is for uh, this to be true if the user entered yes, and this to be false if the user entered no or anything else. So the first thing is that this is not necessary because bool is always going to return true or false. So for now, we're going to delete it to simplify the code a bit. The next thing is when we ask the user whether they've read the book or not, turning that into a bool makes no sense because what we're checking is whether they entered something or not. So it's probably not what we want. Finally, we know that the is instance is going to always be an instance of bool if we turn it into a bool. And if we keep it as a string, then this is always going to be false. It's never going to be an instance of bool because it's going to be an instance of string instead. So what we want to do is to say if red is yes, then we'll say that the red status is true. And if red is no, then we're going to say false like that. Now, of course, there's a lot of simplification that we can do in this code. We're going to do that in just a moment. But this is the gist of the problem. Before we were trying to turn a string into a Boolean, and that's not really what we wanted to do. What we wanted to do was to check whether the user gave us an input that would make us want a true or false value after. Uh, so relying on the user to give you the value that you want to put in a database, or in this case, a list, uh, relying on the user to give you the right value at all times um, is being a bit too strict because the user could enter something that you don't expect, for example. So now that we have this, we've clearly got a lot of duplication in this code. I'm sure that even if you're not very experienced with Python, you can see that we've got you know this new book being created, which is mainly code that's duplicated, except this last bit here. We've got this line here that is clearly duplicated in both codes. Uh, and then we've got the if statement that essentially checks whether the red is yes or no. And uh, sorry, this should actually be no. Now, because the no is the default value, that means that the user might enter yes, or they might not enter anything. What I'm going to do in this code is say that if the user enters yes, we're going to say that the book was read. So we're going to set red to true. And if they enter anything else, then we're going to say that red was false. So that's going to catch no, and it's also going to catch, you know, anything else like ASDF or blah, or whatever else that the user wants to enter. So now, we can simplify this code a bit. We can remove this books append new book from the top if statement, and we can remove it from the bottom if statement as well. So uh, removing that um, simplifies the code slightly so that now we have that if red is yes, then we create this new book variable, which has the name author and red status set to true. Otherwise, we create the new book variable with name author and red status set to false. This is actually a very common thing that new Python developers do. What's happening here is we're using an if statement that gives us or checks a Boolean to create a variable that contains a Boolean equal to uh, or directly related to the Boolean we're checking. Uh, so that's a long winded way of saying that the value of this Boolean is this value here. And the value of the opposite of this Boolean is this value here. So if red is yes, we use true. If red is not yes, we use false. So we can make this code much simpler by removing entirely all of this code and setting the red status to the Boolean itself. Uh, so red equal equal yes is going to evaluate to true if this red string is yes. Otherwise, it's going to equal no in all other cases. If it's an empty string, if it's the word no, if it's anything else. So this makes our code much simpler because now we're not relying on an if statement that we can potentially get wrong uh, if we don't put the else in the right place or if we don't use the right logic and so on. And this makes things much more readable, uh, pun not intended. 
and because now we've got the red status is equal to whether the book was read or not. This is how this reads in my head at least, whereas before we had to sort of parse through the if statement and that was a bit more complicated. So hope this helps you guys, a very common problem in uh, interactive user menus when you want to get a boolean value from the user don't try to get the user to give you the value you want true or false ask them the question and then turn that into a boolean yourself by using the data the user's given you and make sure the user has suitable fallbacks when giving you values so that for example you're not going to come across an unknown value uh, for example if they entered uh, blah you want to make sure that you can do something with that value instead of simply giving an error or maybe doing nothing. Uh, so once again, that's it for this video. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.